Hey everybody, welcome back to Barbecue by Biggs. I'm Aaron, and on today's video, we're gonna bring you that Cajun favorite, boudin. That's right, we're gonna make up some homemade boudin, and if you guys wanna see how that turns out, come along with us. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. We're gonna start with four of these medium yellow onions. We also have four green bell peppers, and of course, we wouldn't have the Cajun Trinity without that celery. We're just gonna rough chop all this into large pieces because we're gonna end up grinding this with the meat. Uh, we also had a big bunch of celery that we're gonna chop, rough chop as well. We also chopped up four bunches of green onions just in small little rounds for the greens and small little rounds for the onion part that we're gonna add in a little bit later. We have two bunches of parsley that we're gonna take each one of those bunches. One's gonna be added in when we grind, the other one will be added in when we mix. So let's get outside and get that fire started. All right, we got our pan hot. We're gonna just take a, a full pork butt, fat side down, drop it in the bottom of the pan. What that's gonna do is create some grease on the bottom for the peppers, onions, and uh, celery. So we got four onions chopped up coarsely. This pork butt this is eight pounds. We have uh, three bell peppers and then one head of celery, all chopped coarsely going in. We'll let them sweat a little bit. Get those in there. Go ahead and throw in those green onion tops. We're using the green part later on, but we'll use the onion part in this. Two tablespoons of minced garlic. Get that in there. Four grams of black pepper. Four grams of cayenne. 42, gra 42 grams of salt. Now we're doing these in grams weighed out, so that way this is eight pounds of pork butt. If you're using four pounds, you can just divide that by two. If you're using less than that, you just weigh it out that way. It makes it a whole lot easier. Go ahead and add the salt. Give, it, give that a good stir down there. Going in with some Uncle Steve's Gator Shake. Got one and a quarter pounds of chicken livers. Now you can use pork livers. We like chicken livers. They're a little bit less pungent. So we'll get those in there too. So we got six quarts of water we're adding. Basically I'm gonna come over the top of that pork just by a bit. So we're gonna get this up to a boil. Once you have it at rolling boil, we're gonna reduce the heat, cover it and simmer it for probably about two hours. We're gonna simmer it until that bone pulls clean of that pork butt. So we'll bring you guys back in about two hours. So the pork and vegetables have been simmering for about three and a half hours. We're gonna get those pulled off now. It's tender enough to get it out of there and we'll get it ready to grind up. We wanna get all those vegetables and all that meat out of there. If you have a big strainer, you can just pour it through the strainer. This is all I got, so this is what we're gonna use. All right, we're gonna reserve some of this liquid as well for when we mix it all together. Just run that right through the strainer. 
probably won't need that much, but we'll have it if we need it. Once we have it strained out, we bring it in. We got the meat grinder out. We're using a Cabela's three quarter horsepower grinder. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take it while it's hot on coarse setting and just run it through the grinder. As we grind it, we're gonna add half of that parsley and half of the cut green onion top. So we're adding for our particular amount, we're gonna add one cup as we go along of each and then just have that grind into that as it goes. Now, I didn't show cutting up those green onions, but we took four of the little packs of green onions you get from the grocery store and we cut up the greens and we cut up the onion part at the bottom. We added the onion part at the bottom to the meat mixture. The greens we're gonna add in as we go here. So half of them will go in as we, as we grind this meat up and the vegetables, and then the other half will go in once we have the rice mixture together. So we're incrementally adding those tops and that parsley as we go along here. So again, we are grinding this on that coarse grind setting. And once we have this ground up and all of the ingredients mixed together, we're gonna add the rice. This was six cups of uncooked rice that we prepared just like the label says. And all we're gonna do is dump this in here and then just hand mix it in with the other ingredients and the meat mixture. Again, these are hot ingredients. We want them to be warm. Normally, when you stuff something in a casing, you want it as cold as possible. But in this case, we want it to be warm. That way, when it goes into that casing, it'll pull that casing to it. So all we're gonna do is fluff this rice up and then we're gonna mix it up with the other ingredients here. So now the rest of these ingredients are to your taste. Now for us, starting point, we're just adding basically two tablespoons of cayenne pepper. And then we're gonna salt and pepper to our liking and our taste. And, and for this one, we got about two tablespoons of kosher salt and about a tablespoon of black pepper. Then I would, I would urge you to make sure that you taste this as you go along. And once you get that flavor like you like it, then that's what it is. Remember, this is the way you like it, not necessarily how I like it. And at the end of the day, whatever ingredient that you wanna put in there, you can put in there. Some people add thyme at this point, some people add oregano. These are the ingredients that we added. You can also take your favorite Cajun seasoning and add that as well. So we're gonna take the rest of the green tops that we had, we're gonna add those in at this point, and the other bunch of parsley that we've chopped up, we're gonna add that as well. And then we're just gonna mix this by hand until all those ingredients are well incorporated. What you don't wanna do is have a hot spot in one and not a hot spot in the other. So make sure that you work this as much as you can with your hands to ensure that you have a good mix. Now, if you do have a sausage mixer, you can mix it with a mixer as well, but just make sure that it's well incorporated and all the spices are mixed with the beef and the rice. And then we're just gonna take that juice that we reserved to the side and just add a little bit at a time until we get the sticky consistency that we're looking for. Uh, in this instance, we added about four cups of this liquid and then we just worked it and worked it until we got the consistency that we were looking for. When you make a little sticky ball out of it, it's ready to go and ready to be cased. So we'll get to casing now. So we're just using standard sausage casings from PS Seasonings. These things are awesome, they work great. We use it for all our sausage, sausage making. They are natural hog casings and I tell you what, they give you a good bite when you bite into your sausage or into your boudin. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna take a little bit of water, put it on our horn, and then we're just gonna slide this casing right on up on this horn. Once you have the casing on the horn, unfortunately we did not pack this before we put the casing on, so we're gonna pack the, the stuffer. If you don't have a sausage stuffer, you can use your, your attachment on your grinder and it works just fine. We have a stuffer, so we're gonna go ahead and use a stuffer. So we had already tied the end of this up, but now we're gonna stuff it in into the stuffer. Remember, taking the air out of that stuffer is, is probably the best thing that you can do with this. So we went ahead and cut that knot off and brought that stuffing right to the end of our horn. Then we'll pull that casing back out and tie it off again. That was a rookie mistake. We made it. So we'll tie this up again and get ready to stuff these casings. Hey, while we get this tied up, if you hadn't hit that like button at the bottom, hey, hit that thumbs up, give us a like. It really helps out the channel. Hey, and if you're not subscribed to our channel, consider subscribing so you can get more cooks like this one. So once you got that tied up and it's ready to go, just put a little bit of pressure on the end of that horn between that horn 
and that casing and then just let it start filling up so just crank it until you have a good solid full casing and so you don't want to overfill it and you don't want to underfill it if you underfill it you're going to have too much air if you overfill it you're going to end up having a blowout so you got to find that happy medium where the case is full but not too full so we'll get this filled up we'll get it to the end and then we'll just tie it off and then we'll show you guys how we're going to link these together when thinking about your links, you gotta have to determine how big you want it. In sausage making, we always have a markings on the side of our pan. We use this big pan for all of our sausage making. And so we have a the length that we like. This is about seven inches. And you take it, that first one, you're gonna pinch. And then you're gonna bring it to your line again. You're gonna pinch. And then you're just gonna pinch both of them tight and then just roll that sausage over a few times. So again, we're gonna take this and we'll measure it out and then we'll pinch, skip, pinch, and then we're just gonna take that sausage and just roll it over a few times to tighten it up. Just remember, the fuller it is, the less rolls you wanna do. If you have some air in there, the more rolls you can do, it makes it better and makes it tighter. So once we have these linked up, we're just gonna put them on pans. We're gonna put them in the refrigerator overnight to let it develop that pedicle and to dry out. And then we're gonna take some of them, we're gonna cook them. The others we're gonna put in the freezer on these pans and it makes them hard. So when we do vacuum seal them, it doesn't squash them out. So we'll get these together, get them ready, and we'll meet you guys out at the grill tomorrow. All right, after we got through casing these up last night, we put them in the refrigerator overnight to have that pellicle form on here. We're gonna stick them into the YS640 uh, pellet grill for about an hour or so at 275 degrees. Just wanna warm them up and make sure that that exterior skin crisps up a little bit. We did take some of this and we put it in a bulk bag so we can use it to stuff stuff. And then we also formed some balls and, and froze those so we can come back and make some uh, boudin balls as well. So we'll get these onto the YS640 and bring you guys back. All right, so we're rolling at about 275 degrees. We're just gonna stick these on the top shelf here. Probably about 45 minutes to an hour, we'll bring you guys back and we'll check on them. All we're looking for is for this casing to crisp up a little bit and, and for it to warm up, of course. Everything inside of these are cooked already, so if you don't get it quite to 160 degrees, you're okay. If you feel comfortable with just you know, 145, 148, 150, whatever you want, make sure that uh, you do that. All right, so we're gonna roll these at 275 degrees, like I said, for about an hour, and we'll bring you back. All right, after one hour, we got this boudin done. Let me bring you in, let you look at it. We'll cut into it, give it a taste. All right, this stuff is done and looking good. Let's cut into one of these and see what it looks like. Look at that. Hopefully you guys can see that on your screen. Looks delicious. It's good looking stick of boudin for sure. All right, let's dig in and take a bite of this and see how it turned out. Here we go. Good looking piece of boudin. Mm. That casing has some snap. It's good stuff. Mm. Hope, hopefully they don't want a whole lot inside. So we'll see you guys on the next cook. We're gonna sit out here and eat the rest of this. Catch you next time.